Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade with another tutorial in the Buttons Design and Game Maker Studio 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we're simply going to add sounds and a hover state to our button project in 2.3. It will be very similar to the 2.25 version, but it'll be interesting to see how 2.3 changes things just a little bit. And with that, let's jump over to the code. So the first thing we're going to do is add in our three sounds. So we'll have active sound, inactive sound, and select sound. And that pausing that you're seeing is actually uh, not the video, it's on my end. Um, I'm not sure why, but when you're typing in here in 2.3, it tries to update it every time. And with OBS running as well on my laptop, it causes a little bit of a slowdown. So we wanna set these to be assets now, not resources. And we can't actually pick which asset type they should be like we could in 2.25. I don't know if this is uh, missing for good, if they're gonna add it in later. Um, I kind of liked it. Right now, we don't have a lot of assets, so it's pretty easy to just go into the sound and pick the right one. But if you had hundreds or even more assets, that could be a pain to sort through. Um, but currently, you can't select asset type. You just pick asset, and then you have to pick from the full list of assets. So here we go, setting up our sounds, pretty much the same as in 2.25. Then we come over to our button parents create event because again, remember we're doing this in methods. So this replaces uh, event user zero and we have the exact same code. If active sound does not equal no one, then audio play sound, active sound one, false. And we can actually just copy this line. Now we need our else statement. Inactive sound. So now our active and inactive sound are in. All of that should work just fine. But I wanna add in the select sound before we actually test it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is create the select and unselect states. We're gonna do the basic version first, just like last time where we say mouse enter. This will be hover, button parent, image x scale equals 1.2. And if you wonder how I'm duplicating the line like that, that's control D. I find it very useful and I use it all of the time. We want audio play sound, select sound, one false. And then we can just copy this over and come over here or mouse leave so like that delete those and if you're wondering how I'm selecting in a column like that that's holding alt it allows you to drag and again I find it very useful to copy a portion like you could just copy this portion unhover um, button parent we'll make this more complex once we get the mouse manager but again just want to illustrate if you remember what our code looks like for selecting and unselecting with the mouse manager, how much more complicated that is than these three or four lines of code, depending upon how you count it. We'll make the more complicated version of the hover and unhover as well in 2.3, but I wanted to start with the simple version and once more just point out how easy it is to write this code versus the much more complicated version that we're using when we want to have some type of mouse manager. Now that code is more useful in the grand scheme of things and when we get more complex, we're gonna to wanna to add it in, but right now we don't need it. And this code is so much easier to write, understand, and maintain than the code that we need when we want to have just one button be able to be selected. We've gotta create a mouse manager, we, we create some scripts, and then we have a much more complicated flow chart when we're trying to figure out whether or not a button can or cannot be selected. So again, don't write code you're not actually using. There's no reason to write code that's complicated when all we want to do is the button change a little bit and play a sound when we're hovering our mouse over it. Okay, let's run this. All right, so we have it. Everything hovers, plays the select, the active sound, and the inactive sound. It all works. Let's quickly review our diagram before we finish. Not much has changed, but you can see that we've added a few more variables up here and a few more events down here. And all of these, of course, get inherited by the actual buttons, the concrete versions of the buttons down here. 
And that's actually it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.